Yo, Thack from Thack Ironworks, how you doing? Today, we're gonna do video two in our cauldron for the Hobbit Hole, which is part of the whole Hobbit Hole series. You gotta check out the videos, there's probably links below um, for that, I'm assuming Eric will put that there. Anyway, in our last video, you saw me make this cauldron, hot dished it out of one piece of bronze, silicon bronze. So now I need to make fittings for it, and as I mentioned in the last video, skulls. I need to do skulls. So I want to do something like this. Uh, this may be a little bit oversized scale-wise, maybe half that size, uh, but something like that to hold a ring. Um, I th that's what I'm thinking. What do you think? Cool? Yes. All right. So let's get into it. Okay, just a quick rough maquette just to kind of scale out what I want to do with the skulls. Um, I still think they're a little bit oversized, but I kind of like it. It's, uh, you know, a little over the top and why not? If you can't do something badass and uh, extreme, then why are you doing it at all? So something like that, that's the idea there. The ring being like kind of like horns coming out and I'll probably do a twist in that. Uh, so that is my thought process there. I find it ironic that the color of my orange plasticine with dirt in it looks a lot like the bronze and um, very similar in tone there. Anyway, that's what we're going to do now. Let's go to a piece of copper and start making our first skull. So about 15 minutes into the process and I have got the depth that I need uh, and I've just roughed out some of the features there. This is caved in here. It's got kind of a, I don't know, orangutan sort of uh, effect right now, but I will fix that. Uh, so that's got me in the ballpark now. I'm gonna work from the inside here and push out some areas and then I should be maybe ready to go to the pitch and then I can start getting down to some real detail. Um, by this point, you can see I made this a little bit smaller. I felt, you know, maybe I better choke it down a little bit. Um, but this maquette is now useless to me so I will destroy it so it can never be used again. Actually, I'll use it for something else. From here on in, this will be my reference um, and I will just uh, work off of that. All right, so about an hour and a half of fiddly. I didn't do an overly refined detail skull, but I think enough that you get the idea. Um, and I just roughly hammered it into shape there. So I think that's got a nice vicious sort of effect with that downward looking skull. Once we get our ring in there, I think that is going to be quite fetching. So. 
need to do some trimming and then bring this around on there. Um, yeah, good, cool. Since we last spoke, I have uh, finished my first skull, or I brought it, I shouldn't say finished, 90% uh, um, and got it roughly shaped around the cauldron, and then started my second skull, which I've got here now in the same rough proportions. Everything scales out, although this looks weird. Um, they don't look the same because this is still flattened on here. What I'm gonna do now is cut this one out and 3D it around the cauldron and see if it will take this shape. At which point then I will go back to the both of them and just try to bump out the various areas, just try to even them out and make them a little bit more matchy matchy. Alright, so I have bolted my uh, two copper skulls on either side here. Um, just to get them temporarily in place. So now they've been positioned. Now that they're bolted on, I can actually go in and I annealed them just prior to this so they are super soft. And now I can just tap everything in and get it conformed very nice and tight around the profile. There. Also, what I'm going to do now is um, pop a hole through here for the ring. So, first of all, I'm just going to massage up the my opening so that it rounds out nicely. This is one of the instances where it's actually good to have a big giant beer gut because you've got a nice tool rest, the organic tool rest to push against. Um, it's one of the few benefits of having a, a giant gut like that. Built like an Alabama bladesmith. You know who you are. All right, so I've got that um, caved in enough. And now I'm just going to take a center punch and right through the center of that. trying to do sharp little wraps, what I don't want to do is cave in the entire skull. What I'm trying to do is just push that opening in. The idea being is I want to push copper in there and create kind of a, um, I don't know, a sleeve that will help support the ring. All right, so I bolted this on there so that I could facilitate the shaping of it and to drop in the holes there. In doing so though, I have caved in my skull there. So now I've got something very elongated, 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 sorry. <laughs> Butchering the English language. Um, so I'm gonna need to pop it off and plump things up again. Um, try to get rid of a little bit of that before we go to the actual riveting. Okay, so I've got my two skulls riveted in place, and now I can just kind of tuck in the final details here, um, and just do get rid of some of these little gaps and wrinkles. Um, and then I am ready to move on to the rings. So things are coming along quite nicely. Okay, so I'm ready to do rings here, um, and just grabbing an arbitrary couple rings around the shop here looks like something about this size is going to be right to span through the holes there. That's 5 16 this would be 3 8 uh, not sure. I kind of like, I think probably the 5 16 would be a better scale for everything here. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, but rather than just do a plain round ring, I'd like to do a rope twist on this. So let's go to the forge and begin the rope twist.
Okay. I'm gonna just pan out it on that. Fade to black, star swipe. And you don't do star swipes anymore. I never did star swipes. So I've got some rings here. I got three rings because we needed two rings. Why not make three? Just the way it worked out. Anyway, so I'm gonna pick my best two. What I'm doing right now is just tapping these so that they line up. Perhaps counterintuitively, you hit the opposite way of what you might think when it's cold. Okay, discard that one. Those are my two rings there. Now what I need to do is I've flattened them out because in the spiraling action there, they weren't sitting flat. Now that they're flat, I can open them up and then close them onto here and they should still remain flat. Not sure if I'm articulating that correctly, but it makes sense in my head. Are you filming this, sir? No, I just left the camera off for the whole... Okay. Ah, sarcasm, the coward's humor. Oh. <laughs> the funny thing is that sarcasm that I'm using there. <laughs> is now handle time. So, um, I just come up with a little sketch here that's half of it there and just shows how it uh, goes across there. I wanted something fairly low. I don't, I'm realizing in my fireplace I don't have that much space, so I'm trying to do a low handle. Anyhow, here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna use this three quarter by three eighths flat bar and I'm going to do a twist in the center which will give it some visual interest also a little less hot to hold on to um, kind of thing and then tapering out to something a little bit elegant so something like that um, I've got more than enough material here but I think what I'll do is um, just do a center punch mark and start drawing out and see how much material I actually need don't know that yet I watch and learn Okay, so that was a very interesting project. I really enjoyed that one quite a bit, and God damn it, it still looks adorable, even with the skulls. What are you gonna do? Anyway, there it is. Um, so I'm just gonna do a little bit more cleanup on that. We'll do your beauty shots as we fade out here and actually have it sitting on the fire there. I'm gonna go home and, and light up a fire in a couple hours. So that's what you're gonna see. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments on this entire process. We already got the, the, the original, the first video out and getting some good feedback on that. I'm just gonna, I wanna get your feedback on how the rest of it came together. And of course, there's the thumbs up and uh, you know, try to help me out with the algorithm and y you know what to do. I'll see you next time, back out, see ya! Just as an afterthought, I thought it would be cool to point out some measurements here. Um, we started out with a disc that was eight inches in diameter and a quarter inch thick. Interestingly, without even trying, this thing is eight inches as far as its circumference diameter. However, it is a full five inches deep. So kind of an interesting change of shape. Um, don't know how to really um, physics wise explain how that all happens. I'm sure it makes sense, but I think that's kind of cool the growth that happened with that. Also, just for interest sake, we've got a four liter jug of water here. We're just gonna pour it in and just see what our capacity is. Again, I had no idea going in what size I was gonna end up with.
Remember in the last video, there was a hole that I had punched through there. We had since, I had my guy fish weld that up and it's holding water. And, okay, we're at the brim there. And I would say two and a half liters, maybe a little bit more than two and a half liters. Not quite three. So that's the capacity on this. Thought you might be interested. Bye.